Hey guys, it's the Diabetic Girl. It is snowing outside and I hate snow. I also work at a grocery store, so snow means people are going to be everywhere for the next, like, day. And I hate people. And snow. Anyways, I am back to do some vlogging. It is January 16th. I feel like I need to date these vlogs because I'll film them and then I, like, won't post them for two months. So if I date them, I physically have to, like put them up the day I date them as. It is 11.20 in the morning. I just woke up. Do you like my pajama pants? And, um, I just have a lot of things to talk to you guys about that I feel like are really important. So I was going to get straight into that. I just got a notification for Facebook. Ugh. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of MIA for a while. And I do apologize for that. I have been really busy trying to get my health back on the right track and trying to get myself back together after um, a hospitalization that I had for about a week. And if any of you follow me on Instagram, then you saw my photo of my IV hand, um, which I was... Okay, so... I guess I shouldn't, like, start by, like, trying to go straight into the story. I guess I should start by telling you what happened. So, uh, the first couple of days, it was, like, the 19th, 20th, and 21st, or, like, the 18th, 19th, and 20th, 18th, 19th, and 20th of December. Sorry. See, I'm really trying to get, like, date-specific here. I felt, like, absolute crap. Um, I just assumed it was a stomach bug, so I napped. I thought it could be period cramps. I napped. I took my doll. That was it. Uh, but, of course, that was not what ended up happening, um, so here we go. So, on the morning of the 21st, I went to the emergency room. It was, like, 3 in the morning. I called Kai, and was like, hey, you want to go to the emergency room? Because I am so sick, it's not even funny. And at that point in time, I hadn't eaten anything since Saturday night. It's now Monday morning. And I hadn't been able to hold down liquids at all. Like, I would, I would, I had, so... You guys know how my bedroom is set up, but essentially it's kind of clean today, so I'll show you. So, this is like the, this here is the corner of my desk, and then there's my bed. So I kept the water bottle here, and basically anytime I would wake up from a nap, or before I would take a nap, I would drink some water, which would usually result in me sprinting across my room to my trash barrel and throwing it back up. I couldn't hold on anything, so then... Uh, at one point in time, I asked my dad to go get Gatorade because I figured, well, I need electrolytes in my system and it'll help my blood sugar stay a little bit higher, I guess. So then I essentially couldn't hold down that either. And there were like, it was weird because there were certain points in time like where I would drink water and then I'd fall asleep for like three hours and feel fine. Um, the weirdest one was that Saturday. Um, which I didn't go to work. I ended up at Kai's house so he could make sure I was okay because I was beyond sick. And I was at work when I got sick. And then, like, I started puking and stuff. So I went to his house so he could make sure I was okay. And I was fine. Like, I ate dinner and I was totally okay. But then Sunday morning, which was the shock, was that at, like, 2 a.m. I just started violently puking and I, I didn't understand. And I had, like, serious back pain and so I'm sleeping downstairs on my couch because my bathroom is downstairs and I, like, don't want to make a mess in my parents' bathroom for obvious reasons. So I'm, like, on the couch with an ice pack to my back in so much pain. It's ridiculous because it's, like, cramping all in my stomach and then it's, like, all over my back and it's ridiculous. And so Sunday was, like, the worst day out of all of the, like, I was home in sick days. Sunday, I literally slept all day. Like, I was up every so often to, you know, pee or to drink water or Gatorade or to puke, and then I was back asleep. And it was like this for basically the entire day. Like, I literally slept through the entire day. I woke up in time to, to try and catch the Broncos game, but I was just too exhausted, and I really didn't feel good. So when I couldn't get the Broncos game to load on my streaming website, I was like, oh, I'll just watch Game of Thrones. And then when I couldn't get that to load, I was like, you know what, I'm going back to bed. I just figured that since I had, you know, slept all day, 
I should try to, you know, wake up a little bit, you know, sit up, do some normal things. I know binge watching a show isn't exactly a normal thing to do, but I thought that if I were to sit up, maybe the headache would go away because I had a killer headache this entire time. So then we get into Monday morning. It's right. It's like 2.30 and I text Kai and I'm like, hey, like, I'm seriously sick. Like, I think I need to go to the emergency room. He's like, well, if you, if you want me to take you, I'll come get you. And I'm like, let me just talk to my parents. So I felt so bad. My stepdad came downstairs and I was like, dad, they're going to go to the emergency room. Like, because at that point in time, I had been puking for 24 hours and unable to hold anything down. So I get to the emergency room and they're, they automatically say I smell like fruit, which means I'm in diabetic ketoacidosis. And for those of you who don't know what diabetic ketoacidosis is, or DKA, I have the official definition on my phone that I was just going to read because I figured that yes, I could explain it, but I figured if I read the definition and then explained it, it would make more sense. So diabetic ketoacidosis is a... If I could English today, that would be better. Diabetic ketoacidosis is a potentially life-threatening complication in people with diabetes mellitus. It happens predominantly in those in, predominantly, wow, in those with type 1, but it can occur in those with type 2 under cer certain circumstances. DKA results from a shortage of insulin insulin in response the body switches to burning fatty acids and producing acidic ketone bodies that can cause that cause most of the symptoms and complications. So basically, Diabetic ketoacidosis is when your body breaks down fat for energy instead of carbohydrates and the things that it should be using for energy. Being in DKA for extended periods of time can lead to serious complications, and I do mean serious. Um, there was thoughts that I was in DKA on Saturday night, um, when I, f or not Saturday night, Sunday, like early Sunday night when I first started getting sick, and then by the time Monday morning hit, it was like, oh yes. I am most definitely in diabetic ketoacidosis, which is when I knew I obviously had to get to the emergency room and that I couldn't, you know, try to sit this one out anymore. So I get to the emergency room and the first thing they do is they tell me I smell like fruit and I'm like, well, no surprise, I'm 356, I just took insulin and I immediately get like checked in and put into a room and I mean like a emergency room, room if that makes sense, and immediately they draw a ton of blood. And I'm like, okay, I had a nice, it's gone now, but I had a nice bruise all up through here from where my IV was. And my veins were like almost completely collapsed. So finding a vein was so hard for them and I felt terrible. Um, and then, so after that, they like, you know, they finished up everything. And there was talk that I could be in some serious trouble. And of course, I'm sitting in this uncomfortable AF bed like, I'm like ready to think I'm gonna die. They're saying I could have appendicitis and like all this other stuff because of all the issues in my stomach. And I'm like, oh my god, fuck, 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 fuck. I'm like, I don't want surgery. It is like four days before Christmas. I just want to go home and celebrate the Christmas. And so then the doctor comes in and she's like, well, we're glad to see that your blood pH is like at a normal level. So you're not as sick as we thought. And I'm like, oh. So then they ordered a CAT scan because they seriously couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And for those of you who don't know, I only have one kidney. Um, the, my, I only have a left one. My right one was polycystic when I was a child and it just kind of like vanished. We still don't know what happened to it. Like literally in ultrasound photos, there is two kidneys in one and then a year later there's only one. So like, I don't know. Um, but of course, because I was so exhausted and overtired, I totally forgot to tell them. So enter extreme panic for everyone. I mean, it's totally not... Okay. It was not funny when it happened, but like now looking back on it, I'm like, how did I forget to tell them that? I mean, it should have been in my medical records, but whatever. So they're all freaking out. I'm like, no, 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 I only, I only have one. It's okay. And then they told me that I definitely had a kidney infection, which has some big, long, like fancy name that I can't even begin to pronounce. And I was like, all right. And then they're like, you're probably gonna get moved to ICU. And I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want today. So at this point in time, Kai's like passed out on a table. I'm like, hey, do you want me to like put this handle down and you can at least put your head on the bed that's kind of comfortable? Uh, and then we both fall asleep and I had, so at this point in time, I had my IV and I was feeling like back to not being like super nauseous. So all I wanted was like water. That was all I wanted. I was so dehydrated. And of course I'm like guzzling down water constantly 
And it, I just, I felt so bad for everyone involved in that situation because at that point in time, I was in so much pain. I was so uncomfortable. I was so dehydrated that I was just like a whiny little bitch. And I felt like looking back on it, I feel really bad for everyone involved because I was probably the most unpleasant person to deal with. Of course, like now I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's who I am. Um, and so I had my doctor kept coming in like every hour and a half to check my blood sugar. And that was until about... 11-ish, and then at that point in time, Kai had left, and I got transferred over to the ICU, and my first nurse in the ICU was absolutely wonderful, um, you know, really just made it an easy transition, because I was obviously horrified, I just wanted to sleep, I hadn't, like, you, you know when you, you're, like, really sick, and you think you're, like, sleeping, but you're kind of in, like, a really, really light sleep, and anything can wake you up, I guess that's the sleep I was getting for, like, two days, because literally, I slept and slept and slept like I literally was like passed out most of the time I was there and at that point in time I was hooked to a heart monitor because my blood pressure was insane my heart rate was so I would run fevers on and off but my heart rate would only ever rise when I was running a fever and I would like not seize but basically seize so that was the only way they knew when I was running a fever which was Fabulous, obviously. So I was on a heart monitor for that reason, and that thing was annoying. Like it would go off constantly. I had a blood pressure cuff hooked to me at all times to make sure I was okay. And it's now about noon on the 21st. I've been in the hospital for like nine hours, and I still haven't eaten. And I'm like, I'm fucking starving. So I order some food, take a couple of bites, just it wasn't gonna happen. I was still way too nauseous, so I was like, all right, whatever. Um, and so then, basically, I stay in the ICU for a, until about the next day at 5 o'clock in the evening. Um, and then I got moved to, like, a regular unit. And the first thing I asked when I got there was, I was like, can we please just take it off? Because it was, my IV hurt so bad. And, like, the bruise underneath it was ridiculous. So we take it off and we move it to my hand. Um... And at this point in time, they can definitely tell me that, like, I'm not going to need IV fluids anymore because I'm definitely, like, 100% rehydrated. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like, only took, you know, 36 hours, but finally. And then I still had to wear the IV because I had to get an antibiotic drip every six hours. And the worst part, too, is that it would be, like, midnight, 6 a.m., noon, 6 p.m., midnight. And most of the time, by midnight, I wasn't asleep when I was in the hospital because... I was, well, the, the first night I was in the regular unit, I was miserable. I, like, couldn't move. I was still in a lot of pain. And, like, I didn't want to take Tylenol because it wasn't really working for my pain. So I was just trying to, like, tough it out, you know, like, be, like, a tough, toughy. And that was, like, oh, God. I was so weak, too. Like, I, I had to puke at one point in time, and I couldn't even sit up to puke. I had to have Kai, like, lift me up and sit behind me because I was so weak. And it was just absolutely terrible. Anyways, that's beside the point. So, you know, I was officially out of diabetic ketoacidosis at that point in time, but I still have the kidney infection. And apparently E. coli, which I found out when I was reading my diagnosis slip. And I was like, oh, all right, great. So then, essentially, I spent two days in the regular unit, um, all constant IV drips, and it was ridiculous. I got discharged on Christmas Eve day. And I literally came home and passed out for like three hours. I woke up and I was like, oh, great. So I decided at that point in time I could eat like mostly full meals. I was still kind of not feeling it, but I could eat mostly full meals. So I, w I like ate my first like meal from home and I was like the happiest little camper in the world. Christmas was something else because I obviously couldn't leave my house because I was still really weak. And <laughs> I literally... At one point in time, my sister was opening presents, and she's like, you're taking too long. I'm like, well, first of all, this hand was three times bigger than this one from all the IV fluids. They literally pumped me so full that I think I gained, like, 20 pounds just in fluid weight. And then I lost a ton of weight after all the water retention was gone. So that was a great time. Yeah, in case you get, it's, like, it's ridiculous. So after the whole situation... I had to come to terms that sometimes my diabetes treatment isn't exactly the best. And while I'm sure that's not what led to this, but it did play a very big part in it, I definitely need to be trying to do better with it than I have in the past. 
and I figured by being honest with you guys and being honest with myself, I could try to fix this. I will say that since I've gotten out of the hospital, my hair has been a lot better. I mean, remarkably better. I'm not going to say 100% better because I still have my days, but it's definitely become a lot better since leaving the hospital, and that makes me happy, and I plan to keep it that way. Um, just, I've been through a lot of, like, depressive phases recently, and it's led me to not take care of myself at all, and I'm ashamed to say it because I used to be so on top of it. And, you know, 2016, new year, new me, I'm really working towards being the best I can be all around. So, take care of yourself, guys, and thank you so much for supporting me and watching, and I will see you all decently soon. I Decently soon, I'm going to say, because I'm not going to say, like, tomorrow, because I may not vlog. But thank you guys for everything, and I will see you all later. Bye!